How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. <clears throat> Today's episode's not too different, but a little different. We are, it's half search and rescue mission. Um, it's half, we're gonna try and spear something. Water looks great. Uh, why this is search and rescue is two days ago, I was on a charter and I lost my spear gun. Um, my new banana gun 2.0 prototype gun and it is out here somewhere sitting on the bottom so we're going to try and find it i've got will with me he's going to give me a hand essentially what i'm going to do is drag behind the boat i've got my old track so black line is my new track this is my old track we're going to drive it right on top of the track and drag me behind the boat and hopefully we can locate this thing and if and when we locate it um after that we're going to try and spear some fish for dinner so come along with us so I'm very aware of the prop if you ever drag behind a boat like this just be safe know who's driving the boat someone you trust if you can't find them I'm available <laughs> yeah right <laughs> cool. just be careful if you ever drag behind the boat I get a lot of people that ask me how my mass doesn't leak with my mustache trim the top of your mustache when you're filling out the application to be a spear fisherman you have to check and have a cool mustache or be a spear fisherman you can't do both you're neutral neutral All right, you're good. Welcome back underwater, everybody. Uh, before we dive in, I wanted to mention at the very end of this video, uh, I will do or show the $1,000 giveaway from a couple weeks ago. A few of you have asked, so if you would like to watch that drawing, it'll be at the end of this video, so watch until the end. <laughs> I feel like a teenage girl. Oh my gosh. Here, wait for it. Huh? <laughs> I was gonna say, wait for it. Dude. Oh, I've never been so relieved in my life. Well, you're lucky I'm a bad driver because I was way off the track. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I was wondering, I feel like we were doing all kinds of zigzags. <laughs> we definitely were. Oh. So if you're wondering why the gun was still loaded and why it fell out, a lot of times I'll leave it back here like this 
in the splash well, completely safe. It was it was literally flat, calm like this, and somehow it managed to fall out. But <sighs> let's go shoot a fish. Big thanks to Will cooking with clams. He's the best. <laughs> boat driver gun finder ever actually the worst and that's the, why we found it the worst hey, happy accident that is perfect oh my gosh my day is made oh my gosh so if you ever lose a gun and you go searching for it save your track so this yellow line like i said i can't remember if i said it actually this yellow line was my track i did a loop to pull the anchor and this straight line was it and in will's defense it is very hard to drive in a straight line and idle especially when there's current we've got current out here so he was trying to follow this yellow line right here and he was a little zigzaggy and on the bottom of this little bloop is where I found it and the current was running pretty strong that day so oh. success thank you will you're the man <laughs> all right let's go shoot something with this bad boy see if she still got it <laughs> two days under the sea <laughs> so quite honestly I was out I was out in this area um, two days ago on a charter and we saw a ton a ton of shooter hogfish and it's a species I haven't covered yet um, and the reason being I think hogfish need a little help if you know where to look I see plenty of shooters um, and I made a comment in a video and people not went up in arms about it but I had hundreds of comments why don't you shoot hogfish um, down here I think the numbers do need a little help there are plenty of hogfish there are hogfish everywhere there's a lot that are just under the size limit the size limit legally is 16 fork length um, and for years i was having so many people once they changed those regulations it used to be 12 anyways for years i was having so many people shoot undersized hogfish on my charters so i made the decision to make hogfish closed on my boat year round for my charters just because one it's one one per person per day so it's not really going to make the day if you shoot one hogfish um, and two all those hogfish that were being shot and undersized i can't keep them i gotta throw them back so unfortunately we're you know on charters we were killing fish for no um no reason so i made the executive decision to close hogfish on my boat um, for charters but like i said there's a lot out here if you know where to go um, and it's been a highly requested video so i hate calling my shot i'm gonna look for hogfish today see if we can find just one or two keepers um, take them home and get them cooked up. So we've got the gun. Let's get in the water. Let's keep the luck going. So this is the first spot. The way that I chopped this up, it kind of makes it look like it's all one spot, but I think I dove four or five spots throughout this uh, morning. This is literally first spot, first rock. If you pay attention, you'll see a real nice black grouper kind of dart in the bottom, uh, the bottom middle of the screen. Boop, scoots back in the rock and there was a real healthy hogfish in there as well, but I was just, first thing, first drop, saw a decent one. So I was just waiting to see if I could find a little bit of a bigger fish. This was the second spot, just all kinds of life. I wish, you know, doing this for a living, some days there's just fish everywhere. Some days they're hard to find. This day there was just fish everywhere. It was such a pleasant morning dive. There's a nice dog snapper here. I'm not actually gonna shoot this dog snapper, I'm kinda just messing with it. A lot of times, even if I don't plan on shooting a fish, I'll kinda just tinker with them just to see how they'll behave how they react to certain things. Uh, and you can see a real nice hogfish here comes in, big, nice snout. That's what you look for when you're looking for keepers is a big, thick snout. I'm kind of waiting, not completely sold out, and I start to move towards it, and I see another one. That's a nice shooter. Now I don't know which is which, or not which is which, I don't know which one's the bigger one. And I look past it, and I see an even bigger one. And uh, like, I, like I say a couple times later, I haven't dove these spots in forever. It's just so nice to see how much they've come back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I definitely could have taken a shot earlier, but I'm just waiting. You know me, I'm waiting until I know I have that nice broadside shot. You take that going away shot, there's a chance of tearing out. Uh, I hate injuring fish, so I just wanted to make sure, um, make sure I had the, the good shot there. And I say it several times in this video, but hogfish are just so mellow they're such an easy target i think that's why um 
I think that's why the numbers were struggling is because, no offense, but anyone, any beginner, any average Joe can go out and shoot hogfish. So even though I had my the hogfish that I came for, um, I think curiosity still gets the best of me. I just wanted to hit a few more spots and poke around, quite honestly, see what else was out there. Like I said several times, I haven't dove these spots in forever. Um, and just kind of was curious. Two very nice, very healthy hogfish there. Those were both of those were well over legal. Just kind of cruising around, checking stuff out. Real nice sheep's head here. Again, there was just for whatever reason there was just fish everywhere this day. I wish it was always like this. tropical fish that these spots hold is impressive. Um, you can see this one has a nice thick snout on it. Big male hog. I'll be honest, it took a lot of me not to shoot another one. Nice red grouper back there checking me out. So I mentioned it with the dog snapper I was kind of messing with earlier. Uh, a lot of times, even if I don't have intentions on shooting a fish, I'll still just kind of mess with it, um, put myself in certain situations, line up on it, swim at it, uh, chase it to see where it's going to go. Um, I think it's an advantage I do have as I spend so much time with these. I get to study their behavior, uh, what a fish is going to do when it goes under a ledge or behind a rock or... Um, I don't know, the list goes on. It just, I think it gives, definitely gives me an advantage spending so much time in the water with these. I get to study their behavior and kind of know how they're going to react. Uh, you can see just absolute beauty of a hogfish here. It took a lot of me not to shoot that one. That's a fish uh, most people dream of shooting. Big, thick snout. Hefty male, but I, uh, I already had what I needed, so save that one for next time. These spots are just loaded. There was three shooters on this spot. I did one drop. That was it. Look at this. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful hogfish. <laughs> I think that is all we need. We've got plenty for dinner. So I hit a few more spots and um, quite honestly the I'm seeing a lot of hogfish in this area. I haven't dove these spots in probably over a year, but just being back, I mean, I saw, I think on three or four spots, I saw probably six to eight shooter hogfish, nice, hefty, you know, 19, 20 inch shooter hogfish. But while I was in the water, I realized I was gonna get another one because Will's on the boat, but I don't even know legally from a legal standpoint if I'm allowed to shoot his fish because he's on the boat. I know on regulations it'll say, one per harvester per day but i don't know if will legally has to be the one to harvest it um so i'm not going to take one more i'm just going to keep just my one it's you know it's a 20 inch hogfish so it's plenty for dinner um so if you do know the answer to that let me know and not you think you know the answer if you're an fwc officer or you know someone who is i'd be curious to know if if because will's on the boat could i have legally speared his hogfish today but um, again, that's all we've got out here. We're going to head back to the house, get this hogfish cleaned up, and we'll have them for dinner. I'll see you there. So I have got my hogfish. I actually let this sit overnight. I'm a big fan of fish resting on ice. It just really... Um, makes it easier to fillet. I think the meat's a little better. It's a nice consistency. Um, 
and I wanted to say real quick, I'm probably gonna catch probably gonna catch some slack for this, saying that I don't let charters shoot hogfish, and then I go out and shoot a hogfish. Um, the, the main reason I don't let charters shoot hogfish anymore, and there are exceptions when I have really experienced divers, the main reason is your average spear fisherman or woman, beginner, cannot judge the size of a hogfish. A hogfish just sits there, they're, very, they're a very easy target, and they will literally sit there. Um, and people take, I had so many people take shots on short ones, and unfortunately, I, if someone shoots a short fish and kills it, I have to release it. I cannot bring it back because I can get in trouble for it. Um, so that is why I don't let most charters shoot hogfish because they just they can't judge the size. So hogfish has to be 16 inches fork length. And what that means is fork length is from the snout or the nose of the fish to the fork of the tail, which is the inside. Um, underwater, if you're looking at the very end of this fish, it looks a lot bigger than in, if you're measuring it right here. From, from here to the nose is about 22 inches. This fish is about a 20, 19 and a half inch uh, hogfish. So it can be a little deceiving underwater because you're looking at that big broom tail. So hopefully that gives you a little information on why I said I don't let people shoot hogfish and I, I went out and shot one. I'm not being a hypocrite, I promise. Um, and a lot of those spots I haven't dove in years. Um, ever since they changed the hogfish regulations, I uh, quite honestly stopped going out there because I, I had, again, so many issues with short ones being shot. So I left them alone and that was the first time I had been to some of those areas in a very long time and um, pleasantly surprised, I saw quite a few hogfish that were definitely shootable. So. Um, I think definitely the closure and leaving them alone has most certainly helped. So these guys are very, very interesting um, compared to most fish. If you've never seen one, you're going to notice when I get this off, they fillet pretty similar to a regular fish. Um, they've got a pretty big and kind of differently shaped stomach cavity where the ribs are. Um, but just all white, beautiful, beautiful meat. And don't get me wrong, hogfish is absolutely incredible. You'll see here once I flip this over. Just bleach white, gorgeous meat. Um, but it doesn't really have a, not a fishy taste, but it doesn't taste like fish. Some fish has like a, I hate using the word fishy because it makes it sound bad. Some fish has a fishy flavor which I kind of enjoy. Um, hogfish doesn't really have much of a flavor. It's white, it's like chicken. Uh, I think it's a great fish for people who don't like fish, quite honestly. And you can see, just beautiful white, no bloodline really happy to see the population coming back because there's not much better than fried hogfish blackened hogfish I mean anything it's just such a such a versatile fish really great sashimi a couple of bones up there but you can see your average rib cage just kind of has a, a dip this one has a dip and then goes back down I took that guy off there's kind of some random pin bones in there these are hard to I'll be honest, they're kind of hard to figure out exactly. So that is where my bloodline would be. So I take it off on that side. Try to come up under where those ribs are and save as much as possible. Hogfish fillet. I have not decided what I'm going to do with it yet. Madeline wants me to fry it. Go figure. But um, I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. Let me know how you guys like these. This hogfish video. Um, I really love shooting these. They're just a beautiful fish. They're delicious. Uh, and I was really happy to see as many as I did. 
Really happy to see the numbers coming back. And really happy to find my spear gun. show you something real quick this is so funny i love rinsing in the canal all these little minnows and hardheads go crazy even the little guys get some i will see you in the kitchen And I am back. After a little bit of thinking, um, it's not often I get hogfish. I was, I kind of wanted to do something special with it. And for some reason, last night before I was uh, laying down for bed, this popped in my head. It's a, a dish called Coconda. I believe it's spelled Coconda, but it's pronounced Coconda if I remember correctly. Uh, about four or five years ago, Madeline and I uh, spent a month in Fiji. And while we were there, and pretty much every restaurant you go to, they have this dish called coconda. And uh, essentially, it's a kind of a take on uh, ceviche is what I would call it. Um, everywhere we went had it, so I'm assuming it's a staple over there. So I wanted to do a version of that, but with hogfish. Um, I've never tried to make it myself. It was so good. We literally, every time we went to dinner, we ordered it. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through uh, a recipe I found online, which is pretty similar to how I remember it tasting. Um, but we're just kind of uh, going to kind of wing, not really wing it, but not go exactly by the recipe. So I'll show you everything you need, kind of walk you through this. And we're also going to uh, do this ahead of time. I'm going to cook that whole carcass whole or the whole carcass uh, later for dinner. But uh, this needs to be prepped and uh, the fish needs a little time to marinate. So I have diced up my hogfish, all the fillets and just little cubes here. This has one centimeter cubes. Just do it in cubes like you're doing ceviche. Um, everything else you need. I did lemons and limes. I think I did six or seven um, limes, two lemons. I'll put I'll I'll do a a link for this recipe I found online. I'm not going to write the recipe out, but I will put the link on there. And it was for quite a bit of fish, so I scaled this down quite a bit. But anyways, um, I've got some green onions from our garden box. We've got cilantro, uh, a white onion. We've got red chilies, tomato, and um, some coconut milk. So first step is prep this fish, chop it up. I'm going to soak this in um, lemon and lime juice. I threw a little bit of salt in there. Everything else needs to be finely chopped from what it said. Um, and in Fiji, I've had a couple people comment. In Fiji, like here, you, they have ketchup on the table. There, there's chilies, these little miniature chilies everywhere. Um, and I wish I could find them. I don't, I don't know what they're called. If you're from Fiji or been to Fiji and you know what those chilies are called and if there's any way that I can find them. Please let me know. But um, fish is in the marinade. The recipe says let it um, chill in the lemon and lime for two to three hours. So that is what we're going to do. And I'll see you in a bit. All right. And action? Action. All right. So uh, after I put the hogfish in the fridge, I spent about 15 minutes honing in my new, not new, my <laughs> kitchen knife using the skills that Will showed me. It turns out it is extremely sharp um, and I'm missing the top of my finger and I've been grounded from using the kitchen knife. So Madeline's going to give me a hand here um, in putting this together. So this was in here for about, in the fridge for about three and a half hours. From what I'm told, our next step is to remove the juice. Are you yeah. able to I'm do helping. that? I got one hand. Okay. There's okay. no knife involved on this one. <laughs> so we're removing the juice, the lemon and lime juice. And that is our hogfish that looks absolutely gorgeous. We can eat it just, just like a, that. <laughs> oh my God, seriously. Okay. And we have 
So we've got white onion, red chili, some scallions, um, tomato, and then some cilantro. That actually looks like quite a bit of fish, so. Should I do the whole thing? Yeah, I was gonna eyeball it, but throw that whole thing in there. Yeah. That looks right. Oh yeah. We like spicy. Oh yeah, this is perfect. I'll be stir. I'll stir. Um, some cilantro. And by all means, if you are Fijian or you know someone who is, critique me on this one. <laughs> I'd love to know how to do this properly because like I said, we ate it so many times in Fiji. Literally like every meal. <laughs> um, so crack one of those things of coconut milk. Was this the one you shook up? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do some salt. It's so pretty. You know, we should do this for Christmas. It is kind of a Christmassy feel. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Here, there we go. Okay. Well, start with just a little bit. Yeah. We're rookies here. Mmm. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so nostalgic. And I imagine, like ceviche, this probably gets better the longer it sits, but we're gonna try it now. Mm -hmm. And that looks... More? It looked a little more. Okay. <laughs> it, it was like soupy when we had it. Yeah, I guess it kind of was. It was almost like Peruvian, where there was a yeah. lot of sauce and a... Mmm. Good. I love coconut milk. Alright, that looks. Again. Salt? Alright, it's salt. Okay. Oh, again, if you're Fijian, get some chips. We're gonna try I'm gonna try it with just this guy. Oh. I'm trying to show it to the... Now I'm gonna forego the 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 whole hogfish thing or the carcass of the hogfish just because I'm missing my finger and I'm asking for help here. <laughs> Babe, I can help. Should I head bob or what should I do? <laughs> so it's good, but it doesn't taste like it did in Fiji. No. It's, I'm thinking maybe really it was good. more citrus. Should we squeeze some more limes? Let me do this. Yeah, I think it needs it I, to like break the that's why I saved this. or cut the just milk a, a little bit. Just a little bit. <clears throat> what about that? We're a little dysfunctional right now. <laughs> it's really good, but it is missing something, so I'm counting on you Fijians to... Do you have Fijian subscribers? Yeah, I've had a couple people comment and said oh that they, they watched. I couldn't believe it. They I told me that. how beautiful they thought the keys was, which I thought that was funny. We're trying to move there. Yeah. <laughs> have you had it, Will? Mm. I think that was it. Like a little bit more citrus. Mm. We so we're definitely more onion. Real quick, we're rambling. Definitely on the right track. I think it needs more red pepper or red chili. It needs a little more heat and a little more salt. And the salt will actually mm. bring out the acid. Mm. All right. All right. Well, so that is our take on Kakonda. First time. That tasted better with a little bit of um, the, whole thing? the lime juice, but um, we're not going to show you adding all that, but yeah, that is all we've got on this one. As always, thanks so much for your time. Thanks to Sue Chef Madeline. <laughs> and um, leave some comments, leave some feedback. Really do appreciate your time, seriously. And we'll see you on the next one. Later. It is time to give away $1,000. Before I do this real quick, a couple things I wanted to say. Um, Again, if I do any more of these, I will never respond that you won on YouTube. I will only I will only email you. Um, number two, I'm not picking the winner. This is going into a program that's randomly drawing a winner. I got a lot of emails and messages of sob stories. Um, I understand we all do go through tough times. I'm trying to get this to someone that it can help, but don't think by emailing me your sob story that it's gonna increase your chances. Again, it's a computer generated program. It picks a random winner. Um, but other than that, let me know how you guys feel about these. I just thought it'd be fun to give away free money that companies are offering me. 
Um, I, you know, I don't want to overload the channel with giveaways, but if you like them, I will do maybe one a month. So here is our campaign giveaway, whatever you want to call it. This one is secret codes. This was our giveaway. I'm going to bleep out. You're not going to be able to see the emails, but I will show the names. The secret word was mangoes. By chance, if you missed it. A lot of you said you couldn't find it. I promise it was in there. Um, 1,661 people were able to find it. So I'm going to go up here, pick winner. Number of winners, one. Drum roll. Bo Walker, you have won $1,000, sir. I will contact you via email. Again, let me know how you guys feel about these. I'm happy to do it. I'm not going to overload the channel with commercials, I promise. Um, but if you guys enjoy them, I'm happy to take money from companies and give it back to you. That is all I've got. I'll see you on the next one.